I'm here to talk about Extreme IO uh, in the next uh, 60 minutes or so. Um, so um, oh boy. my uh, my like uh, colleagues uh, Andy Fanslaw, who uh, he runs our product marketing team, nice. um, Arindam Paul, uh, our product manager, uh, Dave Brace, um, again product marketing uh, uh, manager. Um, I'm uh, Robin Wren, uh, CTO of Extreme IO. I've been with uh, uh, Extreme IO uh, since uh, the early days before the acquisition. So I've seen. Do you not look Israeli? The uh, the transition. <laughs> um, well, you can never tell. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I'm okay, that's the best line of the week so far. I'm, I'm actually <laughs> high, uh, half Italian, half, half uh, Irish. Um, <laughs> um, you know, it was uh, it was uh, it was great um, that uh, that uh, in 2009 we decide to do this um, very different approach of adopting flash and storage. Um, we actually uh, designed a architecture approach from ground up uh, to be what later became all flash array, uh, Extreme IO. And uh, since the acquisition in 2012, we're having a lot of fun. We are ramping up big time. Um, as you already know, we are already the number one all flash array on the marketplace. I couldn't be happier uh, than that. So in, in what metrics are those measured? Um, units shipped, capacity shipped, revenue, uh, well, a lot of uh, the startups, uh, they don't publish public information, so we have to base our judgment on the best available information that we can have. Right, so there's no public information to disprove or disprove that well, statement. Have they? Have they? Have yeah. They have yeah. yeah, but I mean, if, if you've got the, the EMC sales force and the number of companies that are metaphysically, we're an EMC shop and you can't outsell a startup, Something's wrong. <laughs> um, well, <laughs> nothing. <laughs> okay. Well, um, I uh, I want to startups in this space. <laughs> um, I'm not a product manager, uh, so I want to say um, I will be <laughs> focusing most on uh, mostly on technology for the next 60 minutes. Mm -hmm. So. Um, um, I'll be happy to answer all the technical questions um, to the best of my knowledge, um, and uh, we'll have a lot of fun. Cool. Okay, so um, when people talk about all flash array, when people talk about flash storage, the very first thing that comes to mind is performance, is the speed. However, I think there is a bigger picture uh, there is a bigger question to be answered here. I think what Extreme IO <coughs> is about is far beyond just about performance. What Extreme IO is about is to how do you enable the next generation faster, more agile, more efficient virtualized data center. And it's not just performance. But the next generation of application services that make your applications better. So let me try to be a little bit more specific, give you a couple examples, right? So let's step away from storage for a second. Everybody recognize this card. <coughs> What's so different about it? And I would imagine most of you would agree with me that this is not just an ordinary car. It's not the fastest car in its class, for sure. It's not the cheapest. It's not the most fancy one. But it's the most different. It's probably one of the most different cars on the market today. Why? There are plenty of electric cars, hybrids, but this one Tesla took a very unique approach. From day one, they said, we're going to go all in with electrical. 100%. Mm -hmm. No gasoline. And what they ended up with is a very, very different car. It's not just about performance. Yeah, performance is a big part of this. Don't get me wrong. 
Okay, and performance probably is the number one reason why people bought this car. But however, it's far, far beyond that. It's about the simplicity of the car. I was on the Tesla factory floor. The car has about 10% of the number of uh, parts in terms of, of assembly complexity compared to a conventional gasoline car. Doesn't have a gas tank, doesn't have <laughs> transmission, doesn't have catalytic com converter, doesn't have you know, a bunch of the things that you would associate with a normal car or even hybrid cars. Okay, it's the simplicity. It changes the game. Okay. In Extreme IO, I want to ask the same question. What is so different about this storage? And it's not about the performance, again. It's about a new way of doing things, enabling a new set of expanding capabilities. I want to also make a distinction. Again, I'm an engineer. Okay, I, I will be very honest uh, about what we have or we, what we don't have. But we have a very, very solid architectural foundation. I think this is, if there is one message that you're going to walk <coughs> away with today, is that we have the best foundation, architectural foundation, in all flash arrays. And upon that foundation, you can add many features. There are many built-in features that comes with it, um, inline deduplication, uh, thin provisioning, and all these things, all the good stuff I would be talking about. Uh, excuse me. There but will this be is the same message that any flash array vendor is saying. I will, I will go through the architectural slides, and I will review with you why this is different. This is more different. More cool. When? More different. Okay. Today. <laughs> Might even be soon. Easier. Just cool. A few slides on this. Okay. And it's about. It's not just about performance. It's about consistent performance. I can. I will show you how our, our architecture enable us to deliver more consistent low latency performance <coughs> than some of the other guys. Okay. Again, I'm not here to bash competitions. Okay. I'm here to explain why we're different. We scale out. We have most of our, all of our data services turn on all the time. They're working for you all the time. There is no shut off of our, some of our most important services. We're adding capability on this platform every day. Our team is working <coughs> very hard to add new features. And also it's about the simplicity because we have only Flash, as you pointed out, as Sam pointed out, we only ship Flash with Extreme I.O. It's the simplicity. You don't have to worry about legacy. You don't have to worry about the historical baggage, the code base. You can take a brand new, fresh approach towards solving a lot of the, the, these toughest problems. OK. So I, I want to use that as an opening pitch. Um, and I also want to say you know, that the architectural foundation does matter. Um, people say, hey, you know, it's all about features, it's about all about performance, it's all about cost. But you know, Extreme IO <coughs> story Extreme IO story is really built on top of architectural soundness. Mm -hmm. We want to <coughs> make sure we have absolutely the best architectural foundation upon which we'll add many features over time, right? So we, we absolutely go out there and say we have the best architecture, which I will explain. Okay. <laughs> and on top of that, we'll be layering on a lot of data services. <coughs> many of them available now. Some of them will be added in the future. Okay. And on top of that, being part of EMC, we have the best integration with the entire spectrum of EMC products. Okay. Is Many that, things that sorry, you're familiar with. Is that a really obvious statement? Because you're part of EMC, you've got the best integration with EMC products. Surely you would have because you're EMC. I would, I would expect no, but no other company to have better integration with EMC products than EMC. Well, it doesn't, well, uh, yes, it's, it should be expected. And uh, I, I think you know, we, we owe it to our customers if we don't do it. 
On the <coughs> other hand, it doesn't come automatically. It's still a lot of work. Somebody has to do the work. Somebody has to go talk to all these different business units. And as you may aware, be aware, you know, VMware is a completely different separate company. And uh, they, are, they maintain a very open storage Switzerland policy. So, you know, it does require a lot of work. George is here? <laughs> <laughs> so, Robin, uh, I think hopefully this is a softball type question to you and we get a little bit technical detail out of it. Is with that, you know, you guys opened up with a lot of, uh, on the federation between the three companies. Mm -hmm. Does that EMC tight integration with EMC uh, legacy solutions buy any additional capability or integration with the federation of offerings when it comes <coughs> to the SDDC? So I think the integration is definitely happening. I think, you know, the federation makes a huge amount of sense and we get a lot of good feedback and we get questions like this every day. However, our priority being probably the youngest business units uh, within EMC, certainly the youngest storage business units uh, in, inside of EMC, um, our first job is to deliver the best all flash product and making it stable, making it successful in the marketplace, make our customer happy. Integration comes after that. Integration is the third layer up. You have to get the first and second layer completely done, stable, shipping without problems. Then you can worry about the third layer. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And obviously there is, to the earlier point, a huge EMC install base with customers that have standardized on a broad range of technologies, not just specific arrays. So things like VPLAX for active-active application mobility and disaster recovery, those capabilities for mission-critical workloads on an all-flash array are absolutely valued. And the integration with them and the future integrations with the broader software-defined data center management stack as well. So going back to your Starbucks analogy earlier, how does this platform help new customers when you talk about <coughs> new customers that legacy stayed away from EMC, you know, it, for whatever reasons, perception, how does this help in that strategy? Um, I think Extreme IO is unique in, 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 in a sense that it doesn't have a lot of the baggage uh, good and bad um, that uh, that's associated with all the legacy products I think a lot of customers and many of them are existing EMC customer but many of them are not existing EMC customers they look at extreme IO they get excited not just because it's an EMC product it is because the product itself is a valuable product it provides real value to those customers for the workloads that they're interested in. I think it's simple as that. And then I think once they understand the core values of Extreme IO, they start to understand the broader values that we bring in being part of the extended EMC family. And then they, 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 they realize, oh, there is uh, products such as uh, VPlux, uh, there is products such as uh, PowerPath, there are pro uh, products such as Viper that can integrate with ex Extreme IO that can provide additional value. So this is a pull fact, uh, factor uh, that gets a lot of exist existing and non-existing EM uh, customers into the EMC family products. This is, you know, I often use Apple products. This is more like people buying an iPhone, not because it's it's uh, Apple product, but it's because it was the, at the time the best phone on the market. But once they fall in love with the iPhone, they started looking at buying a Mac for their next computer. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's, it's a very similar kind of idea.